Gunmen armed with automatic weapons and grenades have stormed two mosques in Pakistan. They struck when members of the minority Ahmadai sect in Lahore had just gathered for Friday prayers. The coordinated attacks left 80 dead and dozens more wounded. In hospital, we met one of the survivors, Rashid. He was hit by three bullets and witnessed the killing of a young boy who just wanted to give his father some water. And the son was uh, offering him water, and while he was drinking water, these two people came in and they shot him point blank. I can't forget that. It was very, very... I, was, I thought they would spare them, but they did not spare them. Inside the mosques, it seems that no one was spared, killed for their faith in a country already awash with blood. Police move in to face gunmen who've attacked two mosques in the Pakistani city of Lahore. These attacks have killed at least 70 people and wounded at least 78. Shortly after Friday prayers, gunmen opened fire on worshippers of the minority Ahmadi sect. Authorities said the attackers also threw what could have been grenades and took an undisclosed number of hostages. The four million odd Ahmadis are a minority Muslim sect who've seen their rights suppressed. Pakistan is the only Muslim state to have declared them non-Muslims. In London, the head of the Ahmadiyya sect reacted. God will take revenge on the opposition who have tried to collectively destroy us. How he does it is up to him. How he'll catch those responsible, he alone knows. But God will teach a lesson to those who challenge him again and again. This community knew it was under threat in Pakistan, but to have dozens of its men and boys gunned down as they prayed was far beyond the worst fears of most here. Anisa Manava lost her 17-year-old son in the attack. She lived through his ordeal with him over the phone. Walid called us from the mosque. He told us about the gunmen and all the injured people. When he called again, he said the attackers were coming to where he was hiding. Then the line went dead. Nearly a hundred others were killed when two packed mosques of the minority Ahmadi sect were stormed by militants. They roamed freely for hours. Children were among those who were shot dead at close range. Well, this is the entrance to an area where the vast majority of people are Ahmadi. But just over the last couple of weeks, these security barriers have cropped up, as well as barbed wire and perimeter walls. And that's because far from receiving the type of sympathy they'd expect after the horrific attack on their community, the people here say they've had more death threats. There have been statements from clerics declaring Ahmadis non-Muslims and deserving of death. Many Pakistanis agree. That's why Aftab, who escaped the attack but saw many die right here, is afraid to reveal his identity. I'm so sad and angry, he says. Some said they were proud of the killers. Others handed out sweets to celebrate. Not even our neighbors came to pay their condolences. Just because we're Emedi doesn't mean we're not human. اس تعلیم کے خلاف آن حضرت صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے مقام کی تعریف کرو ورنہ ہم تمہاری گردنیں کٹیں گے ہماری تعریف کے مطابق لا اللہ الا اللہ پر عمل کرنے کے لیے تیار ہو تو ٹھیک ورنہ مرنے کے لیے تیار ہو ہماری تعریف کے مطابق محمد رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی تعریف کو سمجھنے کے لیے تیار ہو تو ٹھیک ورنہ اپنی جان سے ہاتھ دھونے کے لیے تیار ہو جاؤ ہم اپنے مخالفین سے کہتے ہیں کہ ہمیں اس کلمے کی قسم جو قیامت کے دن ہمارے اور تمہارے دمیان فیصلہ کر کے بتائے گا کہ لا الہ الا اللہ محمد رسول اللہ سے حقیقی وفا کرنے والے ہم ہیں کہ تم اسلام احمدی حضرت ختم الانبیاء محسن انسانیت 
اور جماعت احمدیہ کی ایک سو اکیس سال کی سالہ تاریخ گواہ ہے کہ جب بھی الہی تقدیر کے تحت جماعت پر ابتلاع آیا اللہ تعالیٰ نے جماعت کو سبات قدم عطا فرمایا دعاوں کی طرف راغب کیا اور جماعت کی متضرعانہ اور مستربانہ دعاوں کو قبول فرماتے ہوئے کامیابیوں کی طرف پہلے سے بڑھ کر رواں دواں کر دیا اور بشر سابرین کی خوشخبری کا مصداق بنا دیا پس آج بھی جو ظلم جماعت پر پاکستان میں روا رکھا جا رہا ہے اور جس کی انتہائی بہیمانہ اور ظالمانہ صورت لاہور میں احمدیوں پر اجتماعی حملے کی صورت میں سامنے آئی ہے اور حملہ بھی خدا کے گھر میں خدا کے خدا کی عبادت کرنے والے نہتے احمدیوں پر تو کیا اس وقت جب حملہ ہو رہا تھا اس وقت جس صبر اور حوصلہ اور استرار سے احمدی دعائیں کر رہے تھے اور اس کے بعد آج تک احمدیوں میں استراری کیفیت قائم ہے اور دعاؤں میں مصروف ہیں تو کیا خدا تعالیٰ ان دعاؤں کو نہیں سنے گا سنے گا اور انشاءاللہ یقیناً سنے گا یہ اس کا وعدہ ہے یہ ظلم جو خدا کے نام پر خدا والوں سے روا رکھا گیا اور رکھا جا رہا ہے کیا اس بات پر خدا کی غیرت جوش نہیں دکھائے گی دکھائے گی اور یقیناً دکھائے گی The massive floods which are raging through northwestern Pakistan have now killed at least 1,100 people. Emergency workers are struggling to save thousands of others who are still trapped. The situation is being made worse by waterborne diseases, which some of those in rescue camps suffering with fever and skin problems. The UN estimates that about one and a half million people are affected by the country's worst monsoon rains in memory. Pakistan is struggling to recover from its worst flooding in 80 years. Monsoon season has already killed 1,500 people and left millions more in need of help. Today, the flood water is pushed into the heart of the country and threatened to surge south. The latest aerial footage from Pakistan showing what's being called the flood of the century. The search and rescue efforts are continuing. Aid agencies say entire villages have been washed away. In the worst flooding for 80 years. The worst monsoon rains in 80 years have left 1,100 people dead and large areas in the northwest of the country underwater. Whole villages have been washed away and one and a half million people are short of clean water, food and shelter. There are already reports of cholera outbreaks and forecasters are warning there's yet more torrential rain to come. 650,000 homes like this have been destroyed and there's more bad weather on the way. In the south, half a million people have now been evacuated. It's thought 12 million people's lives have now been disrupted by the worst floods in Pakistan's history, and they won't be the last victims. And over the past several days, it's become clear that things aren't improving. They're actually getting worse, and I think that's why uh, the UN chief is here. He was in Dubai. Pakistan's interior minister flew out there to escort him back. A CNN crew was on that flight. During that flight, the interior minister briefed Mr. Ban on the situation on the ground and using maps showed him the flood zones that extend all the way from northwest Pakistan to central Pakistan. The UN says one-fifth, one-fifth of Pakistan is underwater. Uh, that's the equivalent of the state of Florida underwater. Mr. Ban says this disaster in Pakistan is worse than the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami and the 05 earthquake here in Pakistan combined. And he's